Hello and welcome to KX Insiders, our new monthly show that puts you, the developers front and center for all things KX. I'm Daniel Baker, Head of Evangelism, and throughout this series I'm going to be connecting you with the engineers, developers, and the key drivers of our technology stack. Don't forget you can carry on the conversation and join the thousands of other developers at community.kx.com. And if you're just beginning your journey, then we have a wealth of resources for you to consume on the KX Academy. Regardless of where you are in terms of your personal development, I'm thrilled that you have chosen to invest your time with us and promise that we will make every effort to provide you with an engaging platform that will empower you to thrive. So with that, let's begin. Now I think that most people would agree, the world and its challenges are being reduced to data. Look at the last 18 months and how data has been used to accelerate the production of vaccines and help rebuild our economies. In fact, thousands of businesses accelerated their digital transformation journeys as they look to support remote workers and preserve revenue flow. What's more, we have become more connected than ever. Not only to each other, but to the billions of internet connected devices in our homes, offices, cars and cities. The point I'm trying to make is that most businesses now understand the rapid acceleration of data ingestion. The challenge is therefore to address how quickly that data can be turned into actionable insights and use it to provide competitive advantage through real-time decision making, agility and speed to market. Let me give you an example. Now, I'm a massive Formula One fan. And like most, I've been on the edge of my seat all season as the top teams battle for supremacy both on and off the track. Fundamentally, Formula One is about time. Therefore, understanding things like track evolution, tire degradation, weather predictions and the race in line can be the difference between the top step of the podium or finishing at the back of the grid. So how do teams strive for the perfect lap? Well through a collection of historical and real-time data that's then fed into a machine learning algorithm to help calculate lap time telemetry and car wear. In fact, the modern Formula One car contains about 400 sensors, each of which contributes to around 140 gigabytes of data that's captured during a race weekend. But as I mentioned, it's not just about the quantity of the data retrieved, it's about the speed in which it's ingested and how quickly the team can then gain valuable insights from that data. To put that into perspective, during a typical three second pit stop, the average Formula One car will send about 40 million events. This means the teams need a system capable of sub-second processing so that decisions can be made in real time. Now I understand that we can't all be Formula One drivers or indeed race engineers, but the principle of insights going through a combination of historical and real time data translates across all industries, be that automotive, financial, industrial, or security. Our mission is therefore clear, to ensure that you have the tools that will empower you to collect, build, and visualize your data estates, something that KX has been a world leader in for over 20 years. Now to explain more, I'm delighted to be joined today by three members of my team, Michaela, Laura, and Paul. Together we are going to discuss where we are in terms of product evolution and the tools that we are creating to help you learn, connect and build. Team, welcome. So Paul, let me start with you. Where are we in terms of development and what exciting new features are coming to the platform? So I think the first thing we should talk about is KX Insights, our cloud native platform for high performance, critical real time systems and continuous actionable intelligence. You see, it's not just storage compute that has moved to the cloud, it's everything. And by leveraging industry standards and ensuring openness and interoperability, we've been able to design a platform that works across a variety of technologies, such as Docker and Kubernetes. This empowers developers to focus on business functionality rather than worrying about hardware infrastructure and deployment environments. That's great. So by design, the product automatically benefits from the agility and the reliability of the major cloud providers. This means things like scalability and fault tolerance are easily implemented into your deployments. And I guess that because it can integrate with low cost storage solutions such as Amazon S3, Microsoft Blob Storage or Google Cloud Storage, infrastructure costs should be much lower too. Yes, and because it's built upon industry standards such as Docker and Kubernetes, you have portability on where it is running. 
you could spin the platform up on your developer machines, in the cloud, at the edge, or even in your own data centers. What's more, updates are easy thanks to CICD. And because we use standards-based logging and monitoring protocols, we have simplified support and maintenance to offer a true DevOps-enabled environment. Brilliant, but what about things like interoperability? I mean, I know that KX offers a single stack solution, but our customers are gonna be using a range of databases in addition to different languages and APIs. How do we ensure that customers preserve the value of their existing investments and are able to accelerate deployments by utilizing existing technical skills? To date, KX offers over 100 interfaces and connectors. If we look at third-party languages, for example, our APIs give access to Python, R, MATLAB, C, and Java. We also use standards for database connectivity, including SQL, PostgreSQL, ODBC, and JDBC. Thank you for clarifying, Paul. So let us dive a little deeper into some of these integrations. Now, Python has seen incredible growth in recent years and is one of the most popular programming languages for machine learning. And I get it, it's easy for beginners to learn, it boasts a simplified syntax and gives more emphasis on natural language. What are we doing to integrate languages like this into our platform? So we have several Python plugins that developers have used in the past, including things like EmbedPy, PyQ and QPython, each of which served a purpose, but were often considered expensive in terms of system overhead and ease of use. Today, many of our developers rely on PyKDB, which takes a much more Pythonic approach to interfacing with KDB+. Let's jump into a demo and take a look. Here, I'm going to start the Python interpreter and import some base libraries. Next, I will import the PyKDB libraries and run a basic line of Q code. Note, we can also assign Python object values to Q variables which then allows for a seamless transition between the two languages. For me though, the true power and elegance of Q is observed when comparing to Python libraries such as Pandas, a commonly used tool for data analysis and manipulation. To demonstrate, I will compare values from a 2021 MIC yellow cab data set using both approaches. I will start by using Pandas functionality to read in a CSV. Depending on the demands of the task, there can often be significant code overhead to sanitize data in Pandas. In the current example, I'm making modifications to a column to allow for mathematical comparison later on. Q streamlines this process into a single line. Here you can see we are setting our data types upon ingestion, setting the delimiter, then pulling that data from disk fully formatted into our Q process. Mm -hmm. We can also use PyKDB's interoperability to pass our KDB table to Python as a data frame, proving the flexibility between both interfaces. Let's now look at some simple querying and cleanup routines. I'm going to begin by comparing the group by command. As you can see, both offer easy methods to acquire count by aggregations. However, when it comes to cleaning up the data, pandas can be syntactically more complicated. Let's do an example where we want to remove any taxi trips that have passenger counts outside of one to six. We're going to compare using a data frame drop method now versus a KDB delete statement. I want to show the Q version of the above statement offers greater readability, but I also want to take this time to show off the Q.console functionality. This allows the user to drop into an active Q console, make changes to the Q objects, and then return to the Python prompt. This flexibility is something we are very excited about. Finally, I'm gonna show off the simplicity of more complicated aggregations. Functions such as a weighted average, not native to pandas, is something again that can be demonstrated in one readable line of Q code. If we compare this to a pandas method, we often have to break this into a multi-step action, starting with grouping the data. Then we can move on to creating a custom weighted average function, most likely taking advantage of a NumPy library, writing separate aggregations, and finally joining these outputs using a merge functionality. All of which is to say the output, the output that we created using Python and Q, whilst identical, could arguably have been written as a single line of more readable Q code. 
But more than this, the advancements made in PyKDB interoperability allow us to pass these Q and Pandas objects back and forth, complementing both technologies and hopefully making the lives of either Python or Q developers and data scientists much easier and inspiring development in the future. Thanks, Paul. That was great. Now, Michaela, I know that you've been doing some work with SQL integration. Could you share an update for our viewers? Sure. So let me start by running the Q Cloud Edition and pull in the data that Paul was using to create a KDB table named Trips. Next, I will query the data using SQL. For example, if I want to write a select statement returning all of our columns, I can do so using the S prompt. Note that there is also a second option available, SQL execute or .s.e. This allows me to save our outputs into a new variable, which I will call table trips. I can then apply inbuilt SQL aggregation functions on my KDB data. So for example, if I want to calculate the average fares from within the table, I can simply use an SQL average function. I can also use the SQL group by function to get my averages per vendor. By using the data definition language or DDL, we can create, insert, and then drop tables. And honestly, incorporating DDL into the product will make it super easy for SQL users. As you can see, I can create a new table, insert some records, and then delete using the common language. But obviously the power of data comes from its easy visualization. And at KX, we have the ability to not only integrate with our own dashboards, but with a wealth of other solutions too. Let's take a look. I will begin with KX dashboards. So what we have here is a simple visualization of the trips data, which have been created using Q. What's really cool is that we can amend this data set and visualize by using SQL. Let me demonstrate. So if I select the widget and click on data source, you can see that we are presented with a pop-up window. From here, I can simply select SQL and add my statement. Then the data will update and reflect my changes. I can also further manipulate our visualization by adding a filter on the passenger count. In this instance, I will only show trips where the passenger count is greater than two. And as I mentioned previously, KX have invested in interoperability. So if I now switch to Grafana, you can see that I'm able to quickly add a Postgres data source and then query my KDB database using the same SQL as before. Finally, I will demonstrate how I can visualize our data source via Postgres on Tableau. Thank you. You know, it's so empowering for me to see that as a company, we are listening to developer feedback and in turn integrating industry standardized tooling into our products. These integrations alongside the powerful capability we already have at hand mean that developers now have a choice in how they unlock the power of both real time and historical analytics. What's more, we are developing the materials that will help you learn and foster these new skills. In fact, Michaela, perhaps you could talk about the amazing work that you've been doing with the KX Academy. Sure. So the Academy is our new self-serve learning portal free to anyone who wants to learn more about the portfolio of KX products. If you head over to kx.com forward slash Academy, you'll find an expanding portfolio of lessons covering topics such as KX insights, developer dashboards, KDB plus and Q. Let's take a look. So from the landing page, you can see that learners have access to several introductory topics and 14 modules from our KX Fundamentals course. I will select Introduction to Developer. Now, if this is your first time accessing the Academy, you will be prompted to authenticate. And you can do this by either creating a new account or simply logging in using your Google or Microsoft Live ID. Either way, once authenticated, you will see the lessons listed in the left-hand pane and the accompanying on-demand content in the main window. One feature that I am particularly excited to share are our new sandbox environments. These are designed to help customers quickly spin up free cloud-enabled demos and therefore removes the need to install anything locally on your machine. In this instance, learners will then work through a simple markdown file, completing lab exercises and code cell examples designed to help ascertain knowledge. 
In comparison, if we go back and launch the introductory workshop, learners will complete their lab exercises via a selection of Jupyter Notebooks, each of which contain course instruction and code examples. And finally, if I launch the dashboard course, learners will work through product specific demo solutions and create blank dashboards to populate during labs. Michaela, that's awesome. Thank you for your continued efforts in supporting our developers. You know, it's super important that every developer, every consumer of business IT stay abreast of the dynamic changes of the industry. In the past, classroom learning was the de facto standard, but we are now transitioning from these traditional practices and adopting a more blended learning approach. And I'm not saying there isn't value in classroom training, not at all. And we offer several instructor-led classes on the KX website for both early adopters and seasoned professionals. But the world we live in now fosters a culture of instant information retrieval. Therefore, our on-demand resources will be invaluable in helping you stay on top of the accelerated pace of change. So Michaela, what happens on course completion? Do learners get a certificate or a badge? Yes, they get both. So on completion, learners complete an end of course quiz and once successfully passed, will be awarded a digital course certificate that they can both print and share on social media platforms. What's more, if they are community members, they will also receive a digital badge that they can add to their profiles. I love the fact that our developers have the capability to showcase new skills on the community. That's what it's all about. Being proud of your continued learning and development whilst inspiring others along the way. Now, Laura, I know that you've been doing some stellar work on the community. Perhaps you can give us an update on what's been going on and any events that we have in the pipeline. Thanks, Dan. So we set up the community to provide two main goals. Firstly, to allow experienced developers to share ideas through blogs, code and content. And secondly, as a conduit for new users to seek guidance from their peers. Users can browse through the discussion groups, search articles and blogs, or post new questions into the community. Our moderated discussion groups are specifically designed to create engaging conversations with users being rewarded through continued participation. Simply put, the more you post, respond and support other users, the more recognised you are in the community through badges, kudos and increased ranking. And if the community is unable to answer your question, then our own developers will via direct channels to our technical teams. Now it's still early days, but since migrating from the old systems in June, we've seen tremendous growth. And in turn, we've driven to cultivate a resource in which we can all find value. To that, we've recently incorporated opportunities for you to feed back to the team. We value your input and we want to know about your experiences, good or bad. If something is working well, let us know. If it's not, tell us and we'll put it right. Laura, thank you. I love the fact that we have given users a voice. It demonstrates that we are both listening and that we are learning. But what are we doing in terms of virtual and in-person events? So we've been listening to our customers with regard to in-person events, and we are planning to schedule some evening meetups in the new year. One event that I'm particularly excited about is the hackathon that we will be scheduling for March 2022. Registrations will soon go live, so look out for them in the community and on our social media posts. The hackathon will allow developers of all capabilities to work with our technical teams to create solutions that will both create and visualise the risks of returning to the workplace in a post-COVID world. We can't wait to be meeting developers again. We can't wait to be back sharing ideas and learning from one another. Like you, we've missed that connection and that sense of community. And we want to create exciting content that we can take on the road and build alongside you. Laura, that's great. I can't wait to see what our community of developers build and look forward to being inspired with their unique approaches to solving the challenges. I want to thank my team for the updates and once again say a heartfelt thank you to the viewers who have invested their time with us today. Remember, help us continue the conversation. Join the community and let us know what worked. Give us feedback on what didn't. Maybe you have a suggestion for a future session. Either way, we can't wait to hear from you. Thank you.